You're listening to the Afro Chi Podcast, a show for my fellow Black female energy healers and the everyday woman who wants to heal her energy in a creative and holistic way. You'll hear from Black female healers who share their knowledge, gifts, and experiences and enlighten you on how to tap into your powerful Black energy to get the results you need to live an energetically free life. If you're ready to become unstuck, find freedom and peace energetically, stay tuned. I'm your host, Kiara Flipping. Hey guys, we have a great topic today and one that I was really intentional about having within the first start of this podcast. Today we are blessed to have the owner of I Not Why here to educate us about chakras. Chakras may be a term that you've heard of or maybe a topic you may feel you already know about, but guys, I bet you will learn a bunch after hearing from our guests. She can be found on Instagram at I-E-Y-E, not Y, W-H-Y, and online at I-Not-Y.com. Today, we are grateful to have Tony with us to share just how important knowledge about chakras are for Black women. Hi, Tony. How are you? Hi, Kiera. I'm well. How are you? I am just super excited. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) I was really, again, intentional about making this one of the first episodes released in this podcast because this podcast, we're going to be talking about energy work. And that is such like a deep and broad topic. Like when you say energy work, that's a lot of things. But I found that a lot of different energy modalities, interventions, is connected to chakras. So I didn't want to continue this podcast without first educating the listeners about what chakras are, because they're going to hear that word mentioned in a bunch of other podcasts after this. So I think it's very important for them to just have the fundamentals of chakras. So they're able to really connect and relate more and know some of the terminology that the other guests in the other episodes will um, mention. So I just wanted to start off with having you explain to us what chakras are. For those listening that may have heard the word and it's like chakra, chakra, how do you say that thing? What (laughs) is it? Can you just tell us what chakras are? Like what is a chakra? Okay, so the chakras are the seven main energy centers that make up the energetic body. Mm -hmm. Um, It is, so chakras um it began like the history mm-hmm. dates back to i can't even tell you but <laughs> forever ago yes. um in india mm-hmm. but there there's all kinds of um things that you may come across online where um people have been people all over the world have been using different energy systems um just using them under different names mm-hmm. um so the energy body is is sort of relevant everywhere in traditional Chinese medicine and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the sake of this conversation, we'll be talking about chakras um, as it relates to yogic philosophy. Okay. Um, and so it's a Sanskrit word and it means will. So mm-hmm. you can sort of think of it as wills of energy that line the base of the spine, just beginning at the base of the spine, all the way up to the crown of the head. Mm-hmm. And it said that there are hundreds of chakras. Um, they even extend beyond the crown of our head or below the base of our spine. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, you know, for further research. But we're just going to yeah. talk about the seven main um, chakras because I think that's a great entry point into understanding mm-hmm. the energy body. Um, so where are the seven main channels located? Um, so the seven main channels are located um so the root chakra is at the base of the spine Mm -hmm. um the root chakra is at the base of the spine and the sacral chakra is right below the navel solar plexus is right above the navel the heart chakra is at the center of the chest um throat chakra is at the center of your throat Mm -hmm. third eye which you know most people have probably heard of more Mm -hmm. frequently 
um, either right in between the eyes or up between the eyebrows, up to the forehead. And I think that's, you can sort of, um, each person may be able to feel where their third eye may be located, um, mm -hmm. which, which general area. Um, and then the crown chakra is at the crown of the head. Nice, nice. So for the women listening, they're like, okay, like, why do I need to even know this? Like, yeah, that sounds great. But why do we need to know where our chakras are and what a chakra is? Why is it even important for us to know about this? Right, right. It's, so it sounds like very woo woo and um, <laughs> very out there. Um, if you're if you're not in like, the yoga studio every day and you hear the mm -hmm. references daily so we're here to break it down today hey queens isn't this such a great episode be sure to check out the afro chi healers directory where you can find healers in your area offering similar services to the guests on today's podcast if you are a healer please be sure to join the directory so that Black women can locate your healing services and offerings. To join and view the directory, please visit afroqi.com. Okay, let's jump back into this episode. Um, so our chakras directly impact our physical, mental, and emotional health. Mm -hmm. um, so um, life force energy is, is our natural flow of energy that flows from source to us directly through the body. Mm -hmm. um, it keeps us functioning properly. Um, and life force energy is, it's meant to flow through the chakras, but we have different blockages um, mm -hmm. based on, or as a result of things that happen in our life mm -hmm. um, where, where different chakras get blocked um, and we're unable to have that natural flow of energy. Um, and so we're not functioning mm -hmm. um, properly, whether it's emotionally, physically, mm -hmm. um, or mentally. Um, could, you so give I, an, could you give mm -hmm. an example, like, specific, like more specifically for black women, like what is something that we as black women go through and what, chakra could that potentially block and then how mm -hmm. could that show up in our life i really just want to connect it for the listeners so they can hear like i've gone through this this could potentially block this chakra and i could know that this chakra is blocked because i feel this way you know right um so i think a good example of that is mm -hmm black women in general, um, black people in general, we hold a lot of, um, ancestral and generational trauma, mm -hmm. um, that we hold on to. We hold it in our bodies. We're taught to be strong. So, um, we don't necessarily have an outlet for that. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't necessarily, um, I guess, confront our trauma or get to the root of it. We just keep going. That's all we know to do is keep going. Mm -hmm. And so um, we store a lot of that emotional trauma um, down at the sacral chakra, down mm -hmm. at the root. Um, and then those blockages can directly impact um, the, the flow of energy to the rest of the chakras. Okay. And so we might just be all off balance because we're holding something down at our sacral chakra Mm -hmm. Um, and so that may impact the heart, mm -hmm. uh, it may impact the solar plexus. And so, um, my belief is that you have to get the lower part of the chakra system, um, aligned before mm -hmm. you can start tapping into the third eye, before you can start tapping into the crown. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's one that relates to, to most of us. Could but, it show up in like body ish, like health issues? Like if somebody is going through um, abdominal issues or things like that, could that be an indicator that what's happening in that part of the body that that could correlate with that chakra? Mm -hmm, definitely. Okay. So, so, and then you think about it as to like where everything is located. So, mm -hmm. um, so sacral chakra so if you're having like reproductive issues mm -hmm. that can relate directly to like trauma that you may be holding yeah. or if you've ever like experienced physical or sexual abuse or sexual trauma 
um, that can directly affect that. Mm -hmm. Um, if you are having issues speaking, um, your truth and, and you've just sort of been, um, like biting your tongue or holding. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. maybe your whole life just, just based off of something that you've internalized. Mm -hmm. Um, you could have issues with the thyroid, all Mm -hmm. kinds of things. Um, so all of that like manifests, it can manifest Mm -hmm. into physical ailments. Um, and even like anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I think it's also important. So I, I didn't get to, um, say, what each chakra relates to. Yeah, so, yeah, let's do that. Let's I think that's important. Yeah. I'll so let's let's circle back. Yeah. And and we'll start there. So the root chakra, mm-hmm. that's the one that's located at the base of the spine. Um that is the first chakra and it relates to our ability to feel safe and secure. Mm-hmm. Um and this, you can sort of think of this as, as your foundation. Mm. Um, you feel grounded whenever this chakra is balanced. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you can, you can also think of this as, as just basic survival. Mm-hmm. And every chakra relates to a color. So this one starts at red. And, and if you know what Roy G. Biv is, yes. you can just think of it that way. So at the base of the spine starts the R, the V goes all the way to the crown, but we'll, mm-hmm. we'll get to that. <laughs> and so the second chakra is the, um, the sacral chakra right below the navel. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is associated with our, the female reproductive system. Mm-hmm. Um, it relates to our sexual energy, um, our creative energy, just that, that ability to create, to create life, mm-hmm. um, to manifest. And um, it's it's my favorite chakra to talk Mine about. Mine too. That's like <laughs> my favorite chakra. Yes, it, because it 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 relates so much to our divine mm-hmm. feminine energy. And when I when I speak about divine feminine energy, I just I want everybody to know that we all carry. Um, both masculine and feminine energies. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's definitely been an awakening of of feminine energy and I love it. Um, So this chakra is is where that resonates. Mm -hmm. And the color for that chakra is orange. Okay. And the third chakra is right above the navel. That is the solar plexus. Mm -hmm. Um, And the solar plexus relates to... um, just how we see ourselves in the external world. Um, it may have to do with um, what we think our purpose is and just being clear on that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the color that is associated with that is yellow. And at the center of the chest is the heart chakra. Mm-hmm. Um, that color is green. And um, this relates to our ability to love, our ability to be loved and receive love in return. Um, it relates to compassion, mm-hmm. um, which I think, I feel like we're, a lot of us, even like on these journeys, we have to remember compassion is so important because yeah. we, we get so um, focused on our, ourselves and our own healing. Um, that maybe we were just like tunnel vision and we're not seeing other people. Mm-hmm. Um, we're just anything in our way. We're just like, okay, move out of the way. I'm just yeah. I'm focused on this. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to heal. I'm trying to live my best life. Um, so I think compassion um, mm-hmm. is really important whenever we think about the heart chakra and not just, you know, finding our soulmate um, mm-hmm. and also self love. Absolutely. Um. And the throat chakra, right at the throat, um, is associated with our ability to speak our truth, Mm -hmm. to um, just communicate our truth, and essentially living in our truth. Mm -hmm. And the color associated with that is blue. Okay. And the third eye. Yep, so that's that's six. uh Uh-huh. So that's that's everyone's everyone's favorite. um, (laughs) Or you just, you probably hear this, it referenced in books and movies. Um, but this is, this resonates with our intuition, 
and our inner wisdom. Um, it's a very powerful chakra once you tap into it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it has a lot to do with trust too. Yeah. Um, so the color for that is indigo. Mm -hmm. And the crown chakra, the crown of our head, um, that just connects us to higher consciousness, to um, to God consciousness, and just knowing that we are not separate from God consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, so also another very powerful yes. chakra. And what I notice a lot about healers is that we're so into this third eye and this crown that we get very ungrounded. Mm. Um, <laughs> So, so we're all the way up here in uh -huh. the root chakra and just like <laughs> taken from right beneath us and we're yeah. ungrounded. So, um, so yes, that's, that's different ways that mm -hmm. imbalances can, can manifest. Nice. That was a good breakdown. I, okay. I like the visual, the location, the colors, and I think the listeners will now be able to associate some things. So when you mentioned trust, like if they're having issues with, you know, trusting people, you know, maybe that will indicate that there is some things going on in the third eye. You know, what would you say specifically to Black women? Um, why should they consider healing or balancing their chakras? And what sort of things cause an imbalance for us as Black women? I, well, I think it's very important. Um, number one, just like I mentioned earlier, we were we're just kind of conditioned to just mm -hmm. keep going. Mm -hmm. um, you know, women in general, we're, we're naturally nurturers and we're, we're taking care of everybody else. Um, we might go get our hair and our nails done, mm -hmm. um, but we forget about our emotional health. And, and I will say this, I will say um, women are getting out there and they're, they're trying and they want to know more about healing. They're open to all of these different modalities. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it is important for us to heal um, and to connect to our energetic body um, or to meet with a energy worker mm -hmm. or body worker to sort of work through that together. Mm -hmm. um, so number one, so we can heal ourselves. Mm -hmm. so that we can be living fully like we're meant to do so that we can truly walk in our purpose. Mm -hmm. um, because these blockages can keep us um, from, from living the way that we truly want to. So if you ever, if you feel stuck, there may be some kind of blockage um, manifesting in the energetic body. Mm -hmm. um, but also if we heal ourselves, if we take the time to do that, we heal our mothers, we heal our mm -hmm. ancestors, we heal our children. Mm -hmm. And so we're not raising children that have phases in their life where they're trying to heal from um, childhood trauma. And a lot of us have experienced that. And mm -hmm. it's not always this, this crazy, um, tragic experience, but it's things that we've internalized. Mm -hmm. um, just based on things that have been passed down, like wounds that have been passed down through the generation. You know, Tony, I, I totally agree with that. Um, and what started my energy work is with me being a therapist. And I primarily work with African American women. Those are my clients. And with them in therapy, they would talk about, you know, traumas, or, you know, divorce or issues with children, issues with their parents, just we would sit on the couch and verbally process these things, but energetically they were still holding on. So mm. it wasn't until I started incorporating Reiki where they were able to have the traditional talk therapy, but then they were also able to release those energetic blockages from the things that we talked about in therapy. And I just don't think a lot of people are aware of how they internally and energetically hold on to stuff like you know black women are like i'm over it bye boo i'm done i'm this <laughs> i'm that but no like you're saying that 
but your body is like still storing that pain, that hurt. Mm -hmm. So I feel like as black women, we really have to be in tune with our energetic self. And you made a Mm -hmm. good point where so busy, we're coming and going, you know, we're taking care of the kids, taking care of the household, we're taking care of everything, everybody, everybody on our job, everybody in our family. But when do we really sit and become in tune with self and say, you know, I've been having this migraine and I'm popping these Advil's, but my headache isn't going away. My stomach has been hurting. I've been having these cramps and my, my belly just doesn't feel right. What does that mean? You know, versus, oh, let me just drink some tea. Let me just take a Tylenol and keep it moving. Quick fix, keep it moving. But to really sit with yourself and, and really discover energetically what is causing me to feel this way and how can I release that? Um, so that's just my little, <laughs> my little no, soapbox. Listen, it's important. <laughs> and, and you made a good point that it, it has to be released. Mm-hmm. So the talk therapy is necessary. Absolutely. Whether you're talking to a therapist, whether you're talking to, um, whether you're, you're, you're vocalizing that in like mm-hmm. a, a women's group or sister circle in mm-hmm. a place that you feel safe, um, that talk therapy is necessary. Um, but the release mm-hmm. is so important and, and it's, it takes much longer to do that, yep. um, without the use of, of energy work. So, mm-hmm. and when I say energy work, it doesn't always have to be, yes, I recommend it. Um, it doesn't always have to be going to a professional, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um, because even, even with my clients, I, I treat people, but I want them to be able to do the work without me. And yeah. so I'm setting them up so that they can do this work. Um, and so it's important to know that like our breath is a very important tool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Every time we go, every time we dance, every time we go to, to a yoga class, mm-hmm. we are moving um, our energy and, and releasing, releasing yeah. there's, it's always an opportunity to release whenever we, we connect to ourselves in those very intentional ways. I was going to ask you that, like, what are some like practical ways that black women can start incorporating balancing and healing their chakras like on their own like yes it's good to you know if you can get to a healer if you can get Mm -hmm. to a yoga class or get to reiki you know or something like that that's great but how can what are some like at home practices Mm -hmm. that we can start doing so i think it's i think it's very simple i think um a lot of times when we think of of this thing we think about like meditating and and Everybody I come across, <laughs> no one thinks they can meditate, but mm-hmm. um, the purpose of meditating is to just be aware. And yeah. so it's not always going to feel good. It's not always going to be this blissful meditation session. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you're going to feel anxiety. You're going to feel antsy. You're going to feel like you're not focused and your mind is going everywhere. But if you can slow down and connect, connect to the breath acknowledge your thoughts um that that is the meditation that is the practice and every time you sit down um it gets better it gets better um and so i think it's it's important to understand that it is a practice and it takes time um healing takes time and it's not linear so you're gonna you're gonna feel like you're up and then you're gonna be down again Mm -hmm. um and Mm -hmm. so it's just that constant coming back and that constant awareness um, but some other practices, honestly, the breath is, is such an important tool. We yeah. always have it. Um, and so one way is to really just focus on those energy centers. Um, maybe you can take a hand and bring mm-hmm. it to your root chakra, to your solar plexus. Um, if you're feeling like like your, your throat needs a little bit more attention. You're not speaking your truth. Hold your throat here. Mm-hmm. Hold your third eye. Hold, hold the crown of your head. Um, and just sort of just feel and be there mm-hmm. with yourself. Send mm-hmm. breath to those spaces. Um, very slow, intentional breaths, just allowing you to get into the body mm-hmm. um, and, and feel and and the energy is there. Like yeah. the, the work is happening. 
um, as long as you stay mindful, intentional, mm -hmm. and intentional in those moments. Um, so what I hear you saying is that we need to slow down. Yes. <laughs> we need to take a moment and chill right. out and just when connect. Do we do that? Exactly. <laughs> when, do we, when do we do that? When do we sit down and we're like, okay, my heart, my heart mm -hmm. feels heavy. Let me just hold my heart. Let me just mm -hmm. feel what I'm feeling right now and just be here in it. Um, that is powerful. It is. Um, it, and it's so simple, but it's so powerful. Like our own like physical touch um, mm -hmm. is important. Um, our breath is important. So using that breath, um, focusing the breath um, at each specific chakra, and you can start from the base of the spine all the way up to the crown of the head. Mm -hmm. um, just focusing your attention and your awareness um, yeah. that way. But then another way, um, which I've been using a lot lately, is just using affirmations. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, so not just writing them down, not just putting them on the sticky notes. Yes, that's important. But mm -hmm. maybe incorporating it into that practice where you're, you're holding the space where your chakra is. Mm -hmm. um, and just speaking loving words to yourself, um, words that affirm who you are and not, um, not making things up, like mm -hmm. things that you truly believe, um, about your, your highest self. Yeah. Um, so positive affirmations is a mm -hmm. really good one too. I like it. I like it. I want to circle back to one more thing before we go, um, for the listeners to know, um, that maybe those are still questioning, like, how do I know I even need to work on this chakra like mm -hmm. what are signs i don't want to say symptoms but like what are signs that ooh, like that chakra is probably off Ooh, maybe i need to check in with this like how can we know um especially when we're always on the go busy 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 and we really don't sit down and check in with stuff what are some things that may show up in our life um maybe you know in our personal life or just health wise like could you give any insight on that like what to look out for yeah. So one thing, um, let's see. So if there is a blockage, maybe, um, maybe you are feeling, um, anxious, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, which a maybe, lot of black women are very yeah, anxious, anxious, or, um, maybe even just like a little like spacey and you can't focus. Um, maybe that has something to do with the root chakra. And so mm -hmm. maybe you need to take a moment to ground yourself, mm -hmm. um, to reconnect to the body and get grounded. Um, do you have any recommendations for that chakra? And I always mm -hmm. recommend my clients, if it's not cold outside to like go outside barefoot. Like when you feel that you mm -hmm. need to ground, like just take your shoes off like the old country days and go out and just let the soil and grass and dirt just get between your toes. Yes. Yeah. No, that's it. it's so important. <laughs> just being out there in nature, getting mm -hmm. your feet into the ground, into mm -hmm. the earth. That is, that's a very, very important practice that we mm -hmm. probably don't do enough. No nope. folks, we don't do it. <laughs> We're not going outside with no shoes on mm -hmm. at the beach. <laughs> But, but yes, definitely when it gets warm outside, um, mm -hmm. run into your yard, sit yes. down in your yards, lie down in your yard, um, or at the park. Mm -hmm. Um, but until it gets warm outside, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, one practice that, that one of my teachers, um, taught me was just, just sitting there in silence and, and sitting in an easy pose. So just a simple cross-legged pose mm -hmm. um and just allowing yourself to feel connected mm -hmm. um imagining that like roots are connected to the bottom of your feet and so maybe there's a tree outside of your window mm -hmm. um and just imagining those roots connecting to the roots of the tree that's outside um like and just that visualization of mm -hmm. being one with nature, mm -hmm. um, being one with the earth um, is, has been a very powerful um, practice for me. I like that. And that's really practical. Like 
we can do that. We can find a tree. We can find a place to sit. And like you said, that's good for someone who's feeling spacey or anxious or sort of all over the place. Um, if you feel that way, that's an indicator that potentially it's your root chakra that needs mm-hmm. some more attention. So just one more example. What about the Black woman who is having relationship issues, can't find a man or not attracting the right man or just having just that relationship stuff? <laughs> like what potential chakra could that be an indicator that she may need to spend some more time with? So that could be um, a number. Could be a number <laughs> of things. Um, but so, okay, so let's let's start with the heart. So a mm-hmm. lot of the time, um, when people are first getting into chakras, they may think, okay, well, I'm I'm having a hard time opening up to people. I can't mm. express myself thoroughly. Um, I I just I don't feel lovable. I don't feel um, like I can love or extend my love to somebody. Like I'm just. Yeah. There's a barrier somewhere, um, or it's just, it's not working. It's not connecting, um, mm-hmm. no matter what I do. Um, so people might bring that to the heart chakra. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yes, there, there may be an imbalance there at the heart. Um, but this could stem from maybe, um, something that happened in your past. Um, mm-hmm. so at the root chakra, um, Maybe you are feeling unsafe because of something that has mm. happened to you in the past. Um, and then as a result of that, you, you lack trust in people. And so, you know, you keep that barrier and you keep that guard up. Um, mm. Even though you're trying to connect, yeah. um, there's still something there um, that won't allow you to. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that could even even come back to the solar plexus and, mm. and not feeling like worthy of, of love um, based on maybe something that happened maybe in a past relationship or maybe mm-hmm. something that happened in your childhood. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why it's so important. Um, so it's important, one, for you to, as an individual, to take a look and try and just feel into what may be going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is also where a professional yes. <laughs> um, comes in because we're able to treat the energy system holistically mm-hmm. and we're able to see, um, okay, so you're feeling this, like you might be able to verbalize to me that you're feeling one way, but it could be, um, the root could be something completely different. Yeah. And so we're going to address it all. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, we're going to work through all of the chakras, um, nice. the entire body, um, and start opening up and, and releasing those things, mm-hmm. um, getting that life force energy flowing through the body so mm-hmm. that you can function properly, um, so that you can be well, yeah. um, and, and live more fully. I love it. I love it. And you guys, please check Tony out. Um, This was such a deep conversation and we could probably go on forever because chakras are that deep. Um, So check her out. I know it does. So uh, Tony offers Reiki, intuitive guidance, yoga, meditation, and moon circles. And she's open to facilitating private sessions, group sessions, and workshops. So you guys, make sure you please go and check Tony out. Tony, thank you so much. I'm like, looking at the time, I'm like, oh my gosh, we could keep going and going and going forever (laughs) about chakras. Um, So I don't know, maybe we might need to do a part two someday. Um, (laughs) Because I know people have so many questions and just want so much more because it's that important so thank you so much again thank you thank you for having me I'm yes. so excited about the afro chi podcast <laughs> thank, thank you so much you. for having me you're welcome thanks for joining us this week on the afro chi podcast be sure to visit our website at a f r o q i dot com and on all social media platforms at The Afro QI. Subscribe to this podcast now so you never miss a show.